CEO of the Pittsburgh Technology Council, and I'm joined today by my co-host of Tech Vibe Radio, Jonathan Kirsting, who's also Vice President of Visibility at the Tech Council. These really are unusual times, but the Pittsburgh Tech Council is here to do what we always do. And one of these things is government relations. So some of you know that we had originally planned to be hosting Senator Jay Costa today and Secretary Davin. Senator Costa is going to make an attempt to join us today, but was just called into session and may need to reschedule until tomorrow. Secretary Davin also sends his regrets and we are hoping to get him to join us on the program soon. With that said though, we are very, very thankful to be joined today by the Speaker of the House, Mike Terzai, who is also in Harrisburg, but has just stepped off the House floor to join us. A few things about today's call. First, it would not have been possible without the strong support of our good friends at Huntington Bank who have stepped up to sponsor this series. If you don't know about Huntington and you weren't on the call yesterday when we had the SBA um, leader for Southwestern Pennsylvania, they are actually the largest SBA lender here in Southwestern Pennsylvania. So organizations like Huntington Bank are going to play a pivotal role in getting cash to small businesses. So thank you, Huntington. And I also want to thank the team at AT&T for sponsoring our ongoing public policy series. They have been longstanding partners of the councils and their team is working overdrive right now to keep the nation's telecom infrastructure up to pace with unprecedented loads. So, okay, a bit about the technology and our format for today's call. Most of you will notice that we have muted your microphones. I would ask that you keep your microphones on mute throughout the call. Some of us have a lot of background noise going on around us and we want to ensure that everyone can hear with great clarity. So with that said, we want this call to be interactive. So take note of the chat box at the bottom of your desktop screens. If you have questions for our guest, type your question in that box along with your name and company. We will try to answer as many of these questions as possible, but we're also recording this and we're archiving the chat. So if there are questions that we still need to answer and don't have time for today, we will provide avenues for those kinds of answers. Do not use the box for anything other than the questions. This is not a place for advertising or promotions. Speaker Terzai has made himself and his team available today for at least 30 minutes. So we will try to answer as many questions as possible during our time with him today. So without further delay, I would like to extend my deep appreciation to today's speaker and guest, Speaker Mike Terzai. Please thank you so much for getting right off the floor and joining us. And I really wanna jump in with some questions, but welcome. Can everyone hear him? No, he's muted. Mike, you're on. There you are. Hi, Mike, you're live now. We can hear you. Audrey, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an honor to be with you and your members at the Pittsburgh Technology Council. Uh, to you, Audrey Russo, uh, Brian Kennedy, uh, Jonathan Kirsting, and the rest of your team, um, I think you are serving your members quite well during this crisis. And uh, I'm honored that you would ask me to participate. Absolutely. I want to jump in to, you know, not only extending, you know, appreciation for your time, but probably the most, you know, pressing question on our minds is when can we get back to business? Now, knowing that you can't necessarily know the answer to that question, mm -hmm. I was hoping that you could share how your offices are working to ensure that Pennsylvania firms can actually stay in business as they weather this pandemic. Now, yes. we, yesterday we talked with the SBA, that's one example. Yes. Audrey, if I might, um, would, would you be okay if I just went through some background information Absolutely. and then I, it will Absolutely. lead us into where we, um, where we are here in state government. The uh, House um, of Representatives uh, was in session last week and we are in session uh, this week. Um, and uh, I wanna just cover some facts that we've, that have been shared with us uh, and how, how we're operating and then it'll go into how important maintaining a functioning economy is during this crisis and beyond. Uh, we do have 851 cases as of uh, midnight of last night. We have not gotten the update from uh, the Secretary of Health for today. And uh, we've had 
at this point, seven deaths in Pennsylvania. And uh, of the seven deaths, uh, five were age 65 and over, and two were 55, 52 to 65. And um, our understanding, although this has not been confirmed, that, that of those deaths, uh, not only were they advanced in age, but there were comorbidities or there was some other medical challenge with respect to those, those individuals. Um, there are at this time uh, the following counties that are under uh, the stay in, stay in place order from the governor, although there are exceptions to that stay in place. Obviously, um, it includes our county, Allegheny, um, but it also includes uh, Philadelphia and its collar counties, uh, Bucks, Montgomery, Chester, Delaware. It now includes, the governor updated this to include Northampton and Lehigh in the Lehigh Valley. Monroe, which is in the Pocono Valley, but is also uh, a border county to New Jersey. And then uh, Erie has been added as well. Of the 67 counties, uh, 40 counties have had some uh, element of coronavirus. Uh, in our conversation with the governor and secretary, Rachel Levine, yesterday, we asked what the treatment protocol was for, for, for individuals that went to hospitals. Um, but for those that are very serious, those folks that have it and are exhibiting flu-like symptoms are instructed to go home, quarantine for 21 days, rest, fluids, acetaminophen, and, um, and uh, vitamins, you know, and vitamins. So in many ways, it's being treated just as you would treat the cold. For those that are more serious, obviously, they, they are can be hospitalized, and uh, but that has not been where the vast majority of the cases are. Now, we um, what we have right now in uh, Allegheny County are 30, 30 cases, is that correct? 30, uh, oh, that's new cases, I think, 30 new cases in Allegheny County, and we had um, a total of, let me just read this, Allegheny County Health Department confirmed this is as yesterday that there were 88 active cases of COVID-19 in our county. Uh, of the 88, 13 were hospitalized and our deaths remain at two. That's of the seven uh, that I talked about earlier. My understanding is that these are just the figures that just came in um, liter literally just about five minutes ago, three new deaths, so we're a total of 10 deaths. And the total number of cases in Pennsylvania that have been reported is 1,000 of 127. Um, and so there are 30 new Allegheny County residents on that. That was at 88. So um, that takes us up to 118. Now, with respect to um, how, how we're going about it, but the first issue really is, is how do we make sure that the health systems can manage it? And uh, personal protection equipment, let me just down the this. She, it is it is true that personal protection equipment is at a is at a shortage. Um, the primary piece is, and I, I do want to talk about this with your businesses because it, it's important. Surgical procedures and masks, N95, N99 masks, uh, which are, are resp just respirator type masks, face masks with integrated shields, goggles, gloves, protective suits and gowns, booties, shoe covers, head covers hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes. Those are the everyday items that we need. Pennsylvania did actually have a, a stockpile of about, um, I think it was uh, 1.3 million of these uh, back from H1N1 in 2006. Um, but we are, we're pretty much through those. The federal stockpile is providing us about 125,000 and um, the hospital systems in Pennsylvania will go through those with, with, with in, a, in a day's period. They are using um, conservative practices. Uh, they're not going through them as quickly as I think they were at the beginning. Uh, but here's the thing. We had a conversation with Gene Barr, the um, CEO of uh, the Chamber of Business and Industry, and Warren Camp and Andy Carter of the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania. And we said, how do we get manufacturers, and perhaps this is some of your employers or members, 
um, in the tech council with advanced manufacturing. How do we get them um, the, to know what items, I've just articulated them, that need to be produced in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for Pennsylvania usage? 3M and now Ford are indicating that they're going to produce some products, including the ventilators and the respirators. Um, but understand those will go into federal stockpiles and the federal government will determine how they're allocated amongst the states. We would like to have production of product within the state itself. And if any of the employers on this call can produce, you know, retool, repurpose, um, the specs will be shared. And if, if they can pro pro provide those particular products, we are looking to vote today on a bill that is going to go to the hospital hospital and health system, essentially to provide for the purchase of these items. Now, when we were talking to the HAP, HAP is actually, and, and that's an acronym for the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, they are actually engaged by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They are contracted by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to find these resources and to get them to the hospitals most in need um, for, for the testing. And um, the, the key is, is they are looking for these products. And here's a part that was a little bit disconcerting to us, but it is what it is. Um, these items are primarily manufactured in China. That is not hyperbole. That is not, um, that's where these products are, are made. And what the hospital system has been doing is trying to find, is trying to find um, right now brokers to purchase things like masks, which typically sell at $1 a mask at about $5 a mask. And they're looking for brokers who have relationships with manufacturers in China. If we can get businesses to produce these items here in Pennsylvania, part of the money that we'll be allocating will be going to those that can produce these dollars. Um, and again, that will be managed. We are the Chamber of Business and Industry and the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania are managing that for the Department of Community and Economic Development or in concert with the Department of Community and Economic Development. Um, so please, if you are looking for those lists, I'm glad to share them with Audrey Rousseau, your president. <laughs> and she can get them out to you and then you can get, we will give you contact information as to who you can contact so that you might be able to produce those items. So, so that is terrific. Can I ask you a question about waivers? It keeps coming up, this whole yes. thing about yes. the, the waivers. There's upward yes. of 10,000 businesses who have applied yes. and uh, you know, for exemptions. And yes. I know that, that uh, the folks in Harrisburg are working around the clock, but we're still at, there's a lot of questions tied to that. Yes, Audrey, let me, let me first uh, explain that. Um, gentlemen, what day did the governor issue his, his uh, not when he, he got beyond the urging point or the advisory point and he actually made the order, I believe it was last Wednesday. Am I correct about that? Or was it Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday? The day's too blur, it was Wednesday. If you, if you keep in mind at 5 p.m. last Wednesday, the governor gave this order uh, with respect to what's essential or what's not essential. And, um, but he, he, and he indicated that he would be enforcing it. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, but we issued a press release uh, questioning his ability to authorize that. And he had not conferred with anybody in the legislature. Um, the governor and his staff are not in the Capitol. Um, they are, nobody is here in the Capitol. Some, including Secretary Levine, are operating out of Pima, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Authority offices. The governor is not there. We believe he's at his home in York County. Um, but he had not consulted with anybody, and he was citing um, 35 uh, Pennsylvania Consolidated Statute, uh, Chapter 73. And we, we have some contention with what the extent of that authority is. But the authority is, the order's been issued, and at five o'clock, he did not allow for a waiver. We issued our release and at nine o'clock that evening after our release, he did uh, start this waiver approach. It is somewhat ad hoc. In our just subsequent discussions with the governor, we have emphasized these points about the waiver system. Um, we think that uh, he needs to increase, and, I, and he did, increase the manpower, woman power to answer 
those calls through email and or through uh, telephone and those submissions for waivers that he needed to increase the amount of folks taking the intake on that uh, because nobody could get through. In addition, um, we were of the mindset that as many waivers as possible should be granted as long as the entities could show that they were able to quote unquote mitigate masks, not large gatherings, be outside as best as you can. Um, you, you all know the CDC uh, suggestions uh, and what the governor's put out too. We've specifically argued uh, that construction should move forward. And uh, I would say that falls into three component parts. One, PennDOT and the Turnpike were told not to do any highway or road construction. We disagree with that. We have been contending that in fact, highway and road construction needs to continue um, and have written uh, specific letters and all of our members have been advocating for that too. Um, with respect to residential construction, particularly those buildings that are already underway, those homes that are already underway, um, if they do not continue with that construction in, in a mitigated fashion, uh, those industries will lose hundreds of millions of dollars and, and people will be unemployed. Um, and then finally, uh, with respect to all other construction, including um, the petrochemical facility on a brownfield site in Beaver County, we think those need to move forward as long as they have uh, put forth a, a mitigation type plan, which they are all doing and uh, will continue to do. So we are hoping that construction as a whole will be opened up, particularly since that activity is taking place outside. The other point that we have consistently made with the governor, we did it again yesterday in the call, and he himself did agree to this. So we'll, we'll hope that it gets executed. But um, is, is they should publish the waivers and that the, 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 the mm. US employer should be able to see where those waivers are so that you can understand whether or not you are, um, uh, that you are in fact in the category you know, or, or similarly situated to another employer or a category of, of, of work that has been granted a waiver. And um, I am of the mindset that, yes, of course, the coronavirus is a very serious concern and we have to take mitigation efforts to uh, protect as many folks as possible. But on the other hand, it, should the economy fall out completely and people's savings continue, no, thank goodness, you know, we saw some upgrade in Wall Street's on the market. The market is of concern in this regard. Uh, uh, it's, it's important in a lot of regards, but some people dismiss it. But when people have worked hard over all these years to save for their kids' college educations or for uh, their retirement or for the ability to, um, you know, improve their home or somehow qualitatively in their life and their families, I mean, that's crucial. And then in addition, I, as I told the governor, if folks want to increase tax rates at a later point in time, if nobody's working and there is no income, uh, we can raise the tax rate in Pennsylvania on personal income tax or on business taxes, 3.07% to 20% on personal or 9.99% to 25% on businesses. But if nobody's making any money, 20% of zero is zero. 25% of zero is zero. And we have to have balanced budgets. We're unlike the federal government, we cannot print money. So the key to the waiver is this, and this is what I tell everyone that calls, and we, we've had numerous, all of us as representatives have had numerous folks call us about the waivers. It is crucial that you get the application in. You have to do the good faith effort of putting an application in. If you see that there are similarly situated employers uh, or businesses, you should cite those in your letter if you know about them. And in addition, we are accumulating the ones that we know about from our caucus. I have a sheet here of, of which I cannot read because it's in such small print, but, but it's anecdotal. And I am glad to share that with Audrey and, uh, and her team so that you can see which waivers we know that have been granted or not been granted. And we're, we're accumulating that and I'm glad to share that. But I am hopeful that DCED will have a, a, a website post that you can see exactly um exactly uh you know who's been gotten what, waiver, what right? waivers have been granted uh, i do think that there's going to be positive movement on the construction industry i i do believe a number of your members probably if if they're 
they're probably not directly involved in that, but I bet they supply much of that industry in some fashion. And I, I just feel positive that as of today or tomorrow, we're gonna hear some good news about construction that is mitigating, uh, that we'll be able to go forward. I did see uh, somebody say, um, there's a lot of good questions popping up. So uh, with that, I, I'm glad to talk about the federal bill that's going through the United States Senate. I'm glad to talk about what we've done on a state level so far, but Audrey, I turn it over to you. No, I think if you feel comfortable talking about the federal, that would be great. We could start there. And we will, you know, we will aggregate all these questions too. You're not gonna have time to go through all of them. It's quite a few for sure. Feel comfortable yeah, oh, and, and they're, they, they're excellent. And, and there are a lot of people providing good guidance too, by the way, um, I'm, I'm reading and through. You have some other, you want to tell us who else is in the room with you? Cause you yeah, know, you know, I have um, Rick O'Leary and Sean Harris. They are with our Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee. Um, they are our, our executive director and uh, chief research analyst uh, for that committee. So our interactions with uh, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Authority are conducted through these uh, good gentlemen. Um, gentlemen, if you want to wave, I, I, they might be able to see you. Great. Oh, great. Let me hold on a minute. Just looking good, guys. Looking good. Well, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank and, you. And also, I have with me Steve Miskin, who's uh, the spokesperson for our House Republican Caucus. Right. Thank you all for working round the clock. Hey, and then uh, the federal two. $2 trillion stimulus package. These are the most significant items that I that we are aware of. Um, there will be direct payments to taxpayers. Uh, 1,200 in direct payments to taxpayers with incomes up to 75,000 per year before starting to phase out and ending altogether for those uh, earning more than 99,000. So if you are $99,000 or less in, in income, you would be eligible. Uh, these families would receive an additional $500 per child in an attempt to create a safety net for those whose jobs and businesses are, are affected by this uh, pandemic. Uh, folks, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuted right now, right? Can you hear me, Audrey? Yeah, absolutely. You're okay, good. Great. I'm sorry. Great. Uh, unemployment benefits will grow substantially. Um, there's going to be a significant expansion of unemployment benefits. They would extend jobless insurance by 13 weeks. Is it 36 weeks right now? And it would be extended by 13 weeks. I, I believe that's accurate. And it includes a four month enhancement of, of benefits. So um, th there will be a higher dollar amount. I, I've heard $600 uh, more per payout is, is what I've heard. Small businesses will receive emergency loans if they keep their workers. The bill provides uh, federally guaranteed loans available at community banks the small businesses that pledge to not lay off their workers. The loans are available during an emergency period ending June 30th and would be forgiven if the employer continued to pay workers for the duration of the crisis. Uh, distressed companies can receive government bailouts, but there are quote unquote strings attached. Loans for distressed companies would come from a $425 billion fund will be controlled by the Federal Reserve. And an additional 75 billion would be available for industry specific loans. And I, I do believe that's primarily focused on the travel industry, airlines, hotels. Uh, the creation of the Federal Reserve Fund was one of the chief sticking points in negotiations, um, but this is going to be implemented. And uh, the agreement includes 100 billion for hospitals and health systems and um, the key there is really with respect to the personal protection equipment that I talked about. Um, again, I'm going to forward the list of products to Audrey Russo and her team. And um, it will be admit the various uh, funds are going to be administered, as I understand it, by the Small Business Administration. So I'm going to tell you what we did on a state level. Is that okay, Audrey? Right. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about the yeah. PICA loans. Yeah, if I could. Thank you. Can I have that sheet, Steve? The uh, from Danielle Guy. Mm -hmm. the Just, I, I apologize. One second. Okay, I've got it. I've got That's it. Fine. Sorry, Audrey. Okay. Um, okay, we have a, a, a board. Audrey used uh, the term. It's called um, 
PIDA, P-I-D-A is the acronym, uh, the Pennsylvania Industrial Development uh, Authority. And um, we had $21 million that we had um, banked there, for the lack of a better phrase, under a small business first program. We also have an organization called the Commonwealth Financing Authority that had 40 million uh, that would be used for a variety of infrastructure type projects uh, that get distributed across the state. We are taking the, the CFA, I have a, an appointee to that board as to all the other caucuses and then the governor. They approved unanimously that 40 million would be added to the 21 million for the small business first program. Loan applications are available today. They are available to small business that employ 100 or fewer full-time employees, including businesses in agricultural service, hospitality, tech. The maximum loan will be 100,000 for working capital with a 0% interest rate. And um, they are for a term of three years. The I'm going to give Audrey, if I might, everyone, I'm going to give you the attached um, link to the, the, here, I'm going to give you the website, if I may, right now, www.d is in dog, c is in cat, e is in elephant, d is in dog, that's d-c-e-d, period, p-a, Pennsylvania, p-a, dot gov, G-O-V, G-O-V, slash, the slash, in capital letters, C-W-C-A, capital letters, C-W-C-A. I will also provide that information to Audrey. Yeah. Right, we will share that. Thank you so much. All PETA loan applications must be submitted through a certified Economic Development Organization. For the list of CEDOs operating within Pennsylvania, refer to that website. So I'm, Audrey, are you, you, you may be qualified. And if not, we should get you on that list. Um, okay. As a CEDO, we should get the Pittsburgh Technology Council on that list. Okay, that's great. Okay. So, um, can, can we see if we can answer some of the questions? We've got a yes, slew of I'm questions. Not, yeah, I'll do my best. I'm, gonna ask I'm not the governor, but I'll, I'll do Thank I'll you do so much. I know we're putting you on the spot. So Jonathan, you want to pull out some questions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first off, I'm just impressed with the, the amount of questions we have coming through here today, and they're, they're all just so important. Uh, people are really talking about time frames for the waivers. Uh, it seems like the waivers are really important here. Uh, also, some talk around childcare being part of that waiver, and then also, if you are applying for a waiver, what is a typical time frame to figure out what's going you on? You know, to be honest with you, it, it was it was it was almost non-existent. But keep in mind, it was just Wednesday. Um, now, I, I the governor did increase his workforce to answer those responses. He did. Excellent. And. Um, I would, I, I think people have been getting a response now within 24 hours. Wow. That was not, not the case originally. Huh. And, um, but, but they expanded it quite significantly. I do think that the governor is going to take some uh, decisions at our suggestion to open up broad categories of industry. Um, so we're, we're crossing our fingers on that because we, we do think that there are certain that you could just open up as a whole. And um, also, I'm going to get over to Audrey our list that we have compiled. Keep in mind, it is anecdotal and it is not inclusive. It's just what we've been able to it's a good start partner from talking to our members and, and the members talking to their constituents. So what about education? What about what's going on with education? Yes, excellent, excellent question. Um, we do have an education bill that we're looking to pass today. I will say it has, um, you go school district by school district. I, I live in the Wexford area, Pine Richland and North Allegheny. Pine Richland last week was educating its kids remotely. Um, North Allegheny started on Monday. Both school districts are uh, very proactive. I had discussions with, I, I met in person last Sunday uh, with my superintendent at Pine Richland and uh, Brian Miller and his team had a very proactive plan and uh, we're, we're already moving forward. North Allegheny, Dr. Shear, um, 
you know, it's a, it's a pretty large school district. Um, high schools, 11th, 12th grade. Uh, we have an intermediate school, 9th, 10th. Three middle schools, seven elementary schools. Um, we talked through some of his concerns and I said, um, doctor, any proactive measure we will be there to support and, um, and but inertia or inactivity is not acceptable. Uh, people are still paying their taxes, both state and local and uh, teachers, Pennsylvania's teachers are the second highest average salary out of 50 states in Washington DC in the country. And uh, on a pro rata basis, what we spend on children education in Pennsylvania between state and local taxes, keep in mind, no local taxes can be enacted without the state allowing for that. We empower that. That's in state statute. Um, school districts don't exist in a vacuum. They are, they are constructs of state government. Um, we have the third highest pro rata expenditures on uh, children out of 50 states in Washington, D.C. There's no excuse for any school district not to be up and running at this point in some fashion. Now, some folks uh, raise the issue of, um, you know, IDEA, uh, the Individuals with uh, Disabilities uh, Education Act, which is a federal statute. And, and you, I have referred them all. They need to talk to Congressman Lamb, um, Congressman Reschenthaler, Congressman Doyle directly. There's no reason any of the congresspersons can't talk to any of the school district superintendents or school board presidents within their district. Um, but our, our, our argument there is, um, is, is that you need to call through each of those families, gather up your special needs educators and your, in, in, on a call, a conference call, you can teach through conference calls. Uh, it doesn't have to be through computers, the laptops, it doesn't have to be through cyber learning. You can, you can have somebody using a conference call and having all the students call in on a conference call. Everybody has access uh, uh, to phones in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But the special needs folks need to call through each of those families. That's what we've, we've suggested, call through each of those families and find out what, what you can best do for food and secure families. Use your food services, use your bus services, and you can, you can bring food to the doors of those families um, right now, the, the food services are all being paid. Um, the bus services are all being paid. Every, everybody's getting paid here. Um, and it's crucial that everybody has a plan. They needed to submit, to submit it to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. We are also suggesting that they submit it to the intermediate unit. Every school district can have its own plan to meet its capabilities. Um, one size does not fit all. And uh, there has to be some recognition that there's got to be some flexibility, but not teaching is not excusable. Everybody has to be up and running in some capacity. Are we going to stub our toes along the way? Yes, of course. Um, but, but you won't know what you can improve upon without uh, undertaking it in the first ish instance. If you have to bring around um, through your bus services, packets to your children, drop them off at their homes, put them out front in a box outside their schools and get them there. Okay, any, any other questions, Jonathan, out there? I know this is a tight time frame, and I wanna be sensitive to your time. No, you're fine, Audrey, and I, I can go another, another uh, 10 to 15 minutes if you'd like. Fantastic. Um, one of the things that seems to be popping up a lot here is um, the idea that should all manufacturers be considered waived due to the importance that they bring to, to the economy and be able to make these things as they come. I, I, I certainly believe so, yes, uh, particularly since they're so important to the supply chain. I, I would still suggest that uh, they get their application in as a waiver. And here's, these would be my two suggestions. Continue to operate, but get your application in for a waiver and make it clear what products you produce and how you're part of the supply chain. Right. Um, and, and, and definitely include as part of your case uh, how, how you're connected to that supply chain. Where, where ultimately is your product um, fitting into the, the products that are utilized in, by everyday people and, and government and hospitals and, you know, and if you can argue that you are part of the supply chain with an essential service that was designated in the governor's original order, you should, you should make that case. Listen, folks, this doesn't have to all be written by an attorney. 
just use your common sense and do it in bullet points and get it submitted. But, but include more than less and definitely connect yourself to the supply chain for those essential businesses that have already been listed. So speaker, are there any, any sense of a broad stimulus plan coming at the state level? No, because we, no, okay. it will be, it will be, it will be uh, targeted and uh, it will be within um, what we can handle responsibly. The state governments, we, we, we don't, uh, we actually have to have balanced budgets. Yes, here and there we can rely on funds money to fill in, but those are real dollars. Those, yeah. those, are, not, those are not printed dollars. Those are not borrowed dollars. Those are real dollars. Um, and uh, I see somebody's asking, uh, you know, will, will we, you know, will there be forgiveness items? I, I don't know whether or not we do not have a, a forgiveness package uh, at this time at, at the state level. We are looking at dates to extend in terms of filing. We, we're, I know we will not go to July 15th, like the federal government did in terms of mm -hmm. um, reporting your taxes, although I do think we'll have some extension. But I, I, don't, I don't think we can actually manage uh, July 15th uh, to, to, to remain somewhat in balance. So, Speaker, is there someone at your office, because as you can see, there are so many questions, and we have a few hundred people that are on this call that have lots and lots of questions. Is there a direct person in your office or that you can supply us with, with me with, and I can share it with everyone for specific questions that could be answered? Um, Audrey, what I would do is, is I would just, um, if you and Brian and your team could collect the questions and then uh, just get them to me and I will get them to the appropriate persons in, um, in either our office or in state government as a whole. Fantastic. And yeah, we'll send you all the, uh, the chat scenario we have here and make sure you get to that because I know our, our listeners here are really looking forward to some of this guidance and it's been so, so great so far. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And, and I would just, I would just say one, one thing. I saw somebody's question come up. Uh, look, you, you can cite the speaker if you'd like, and then, and, and I don't have a problem. I'm not your lawyer. I'm not, I can't give you legal counsel on this. Uh, but if you are a manufacturer and if you shut down your operations and it's going to take you forever to get your operations, and what do I mean by forever? Uh, you know, you know, what is a manageable period of time? Like you're, 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 if you know that if you shut down and it's going to end your ability to continue to employ your workforce and or um, continue to be part of a supply chain. I, I'm telling you, my best advice is to um, seek forgiveness as to seeking permission. You should get those applications in for the waiver, get them in so that you can cover yourself. And, and, and it's, it, look, whether we concede under um, the statute, the governor has that full authority. He's, he's operating on it. Nobody's gone into court uh, with respect to manufacturers or with respect to construction um, on, on that front. And, but I would, I would stay in operation, make your case, get that application in, see if you fit the definition of any of the essential businesses. If you do, then I, you know, I would just rely on that. If you do not, but you have some causal connection uh, to that, I would continue to operate, rely on that, that essential action and get that application in for the waiver. That, that's what I would do. Listen, we did tell the governor, and, and I think the governor's of the same mindset, by the way. Governor, do not use the National Guard under any circumstances with respect to the enforcement. It sends a wrong message as to what a functioning democracy is like. Um, he is relying on state police and local police uh, to a certain extent. Everybody knows that there's common sense that has to be utilized here by, by um, law enforcement. And uh, the, the key is, is you should all maintain mitigation uh, CDC requirements. Do your best. Masks, prevent large gatherings. Uh, look, you're all common sense people. You're smart people. Like this is a, an exceptionally smart group of, of folks in terms of business savvy and operations and finance. You want to all keep working. And I, I applaud each and every one of you. You care about your customers, your employees, um, the economy and the country. God bless each and every one of you. I mean that sincerely. You're, you're front line. 
Um, thank you for wanting to stay open and continue to work and to be a part of a, an ongoing economy during this very serious crisis. And thank you for taking the mitigation services and thinking it through. If any of you can produce any of the items, um, any of the items, uh, you know, that are the PPEs that we're running short on, if you can produce them, get in touch with Gene Barr at the Chamber of Business and Industry and or Warren Camp and Andy Carter at the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania. Brian uh, and Audrey know those individuals and have contacts with those individuals as do we. So speaker, you've taken time coming right off the floor. I can't express my appreciation for your work and leadership. Thank you. Thank you you see that we have so many questions here. We will, we will call them and then we will send them to you and we will get back to everyone here that's actually on the call. I know that you're working around the clock to make sure that our issues are best represented. I can't thank you enough on behalf of Southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, I know that you are headed off to do even more. I thank you for your staff and we will send out all the resources that you've articulated and tried to capture to make sure that we have it organized and accessible. We will support people through the waivers um, process and we will follow your instructions closely. And thank you so much. Just really, I, I'm, I'm so honored that you would include me, um, Audrey, to you and your members and your team, thank you. Okay, well, I wanna thank AT&T and Huntington Bank for making sure that we continue to do this work each and every day. I know we will have um, Francois Estlon, who is from Matthews, a company from Matthews uh, International, who is globally trying to manage his workforce globally. And we're gonna hear up front, and then also Senator Jay Costa will join us. Good stuff, can't wait for tomorrow.